We often make the mistake of thinking that the said principle, specific adaptations to impose demands, doesn't apply to endurance. But let me ask you this, who will be better equipped to dig a hole for 10 hours straight, a marathon runner or a farmer? The answer is obviously the farmer. Likewise, if you want to fight for longer without getting gassed out, then running might not be the best or most optimal use of your time. There is more to endurance than simply your aerobic capacity. And even aerobic capacity is more multifaceted than you think. Firstly, there are peripheral adaptations that occur, as well as systemic ones when you engage in any form of cardio. Case in point, your lactate threshold. This is the point at which your body is forced to switch from a predominantly anaerobic energy system to a predominantly aerobic one. The point at which you're forced to back off before you start vomiting. This is different depending on the activity that you're engaging in. Swimming, for example, uses different muscles than running. Those different muscles have different ratios of slow to fast twitch muscle fibres, which in turn means they produce differing amounts of hydrogen ions. When you swim regularly, changes will occur in the muscle that affects that ratio. Likewise, it will also increase the efficiency and the number of mitochondria. Other changes will occur around the muscle too. For instance, training with repetitive contractions this way will increase the number of blood vessels supplying blood to the muscles. Your circulatory system is rewiring itself to be able to send more blood to the areas where it's needed. Likewise, you'll see an increase in glycogen storage, making energy more readily available to those muscles. And did you know that your muscles can even contribute to circulation? Specifically, the muscle pump system describes how contracting large muscles actually increases the pressure in embedded peripheral veins, thereby aiding venous return, sending blood back to the heart, squeezing it back. In other words, strengthening different muscle groups may improve your circulation, effectively giving you many more hearts located throughout your body. Check out the excellent book Beyond Training by Ben Greenfield for more on this. So if you want to improve your endurance for tennis, you might find that combining endurance training that focuses on the upper body and the lower body, such as rowing and running, would be more effective than just running. Most effective of all though, would be lots of tennis. What's more though, is that training that specifically focuses on muscle contractions over time might actually have useful crossover for endurance. In particular, the use of quasi-isometrics, that's very slow movement, and very long yielding isometrics, that's completely static holds, might be useful for encouraging adaptations that allow for prolonged use of that muscle. Counterintuitively, standing completely still in a lunge might help you to run faster for longer. The same also goes for bodybuilding style higher rep ranges that target so-called sarcoplasmic hypertrophy. There are significant cardiac benefits to this kind of training. Personally, I incorporate cardio into my workouts by performing finishes at the end of the session that somewhat mimic the strength training I did at the beginning. In other words, if I was doing a lot of bench presses, then I might end with a quasi-isometric push-up or super high rep push-ups. If I was training the shoulders and triceps though, then I might end with some heavy bag work or battle ropes. Finally, this also makes a great case for circuits and Metcon workouts that involve multiple stations. This is a form of cardio that uses insufficient recovery times to keep the heart rate elevated but by switching between movements, you create a formidable and adaptable form of endurance that will prepare you for anything. Add some resistance cardio or plyometrics to that routine with a kettlebell swing or something similar, and you just made your training all the more effective depending on your intended goals. By using fast twitch muscle fiber, you ensure that you're using the anaerobic system that would be necessary for a lot of explosive sports, and you avoid the conversion to slow twitch fiber. Of course, if endurance events are what you're training for, then you don't need to add extra load or explosiveness. For the super functionate, use both kinds. Plus, this also develops your ability to shuttle blood quickly from one part of the body to another. This shunting effect increases the demand on your cardiovascular system even more, which is why the most gruelling circuits will alternate between upper body and lower body movements. On top of the local adaptations to endurance, there is also a significant difference in training that targets different energy systems. I've already discussed in previous videos the difference between low intensity steady state cardio, like running long distances, and high intensity interval training. To cut a long story short, HIT training has many advantages over aerobic training, and especially when it comes to improving the number and efficiency of mitochondria. Many people love high intensity interval training because it lets them burn calories in a shorter space of time and provides the lauded afterburn effect that keeps them burning more calories even after they finish training. 
We mustn't over-egg this effect though, it's not as profound as many people seem to think. And we mustn't turn against steady state cardio altogether, as this can provide many favourable adaptations when performed correctly, meaning that it should be truly low intensity, that you can't get from HIT. Not only will it allow for improvements in technique and efficient movement with time, but it's also superior when it comes to developing the size and strength of the heart. This, unsurprisingly, is a useful adaptation for prolonged endurance. There's that said effect again, but it also lowers resting heart rate and improves blood pressure. Finally, don't forget the other aspects that contribute to your endurance too. That means things like lung strength and even the efficiency and economy of your technique. And remember that improving energy won't just help you in your training. This is something that will have direct, meaningful benefits for your health and even your brain function and focus. Struggling to focus at work? Feel tired at the end of the day? Stop looking for a silver bullet hack and just get fitter. This will be the ultimate force multiplier that allows you to do more of everything and to a higher standard. If you enjoy this comprehensive philosophical approach to training for real world functionality, then you might enjoy my ebook and training program, Super Functional Training. This goes into detail describing how to train different overlooked aspects of your performance and ends with a detailed program you can follow to improve multiple aspects of your fitness, strength, speed, and focus. You'll find a link in the description down below and there's a discount on right now while many of us are still stuck in lockdown. So thanks a ton for watching this one guys, I hope you found the video useful and interesting. If you did, please like and share, that helps me out immensely. Let me know what your approach to endurance looks like in the comments down below. Of course, subscribe to the channel if you want more like this. I have some really cool stuff on the way, including some exciting announcements. Hope you're all staying safe and healthy, and bye for now.